Hi, I'm Mike. 2020 has been a bizarre year for most of us. For some, it's been filled with tragedy. For others, it may be just adapting to a new way of life. Or maybe not. On the Ranch 2020 has brought us a number of new challenges, and today we take a look at those, how they affect the ranch and its bottom line. It's all coming up in the cost of ranching in 2020 on our Wyoming Life. <laughs> has never been easy. Since the beginning of man's struggle to raise livestock, there have been obstacles to overcome. From predators to disease, things that are hard to control, to other humans who wanted what you had and chose to take it for themselves. Bringing on battles and wars all fought over what kept them alive. Food. It doesn't matter if you're a meat eater now or a vegetarian. Your ancestors, without which you wouldn't be here, raised livestock. In the beginning, those livestock were raised for one purpose, to feed your family and your family alone. Every family had a goat or a milk cow, a few chickens, maybe even turkeys. These livestock were as valuable as our refrigerators and our pantries are to us today. Farmers raised what they could, when they could. If apples were out of season or if you didn't have them, they weren't available. In fact, up until 1870, most of the U.S. had never even seen a banana, those first being available in Jersey City thanks to the Boston Fruit Company. Bananas, by the way, in the late 1800s would cost you about a dollar per pound. With inflation, that's $13 in 2020. That would have been one pricey curved yellow fruit. With shipping lanes and more and more advanced economies came trade and lots of it. Soon, your great-great-great-grandfather didn't need to have chickens. Eggs were now available down the road of a larger, more economical chicken farm. Advancements put his chicken house out of business, and he probably didn't mind. Advances in technology and trade created time. That time was saved in part by allowing farmers and ranchers, your ancestors, to move away from rural America and into the cities. Farmers and ranchers that had stayed now found themselves with bigger shoes to fill and more mouths to feed. Welcome back. And if this is your first time here, thanks for coming along. It's a weird world we ended up with today, but obviously we all have to figure it out, how to make it work for ourselves. Today we're gonna dig into ranching, more specifically the finances of ranching, and how small ranchers like ourselves can keep going and keep feeding America and the world. According to the USDA, the United States Department of Agriculture, there are 2.1 million farms in the United States. 88% of U.S. farms are small family farms, those that have an income of less than $350,000 per year. That's before taxes and before expenses. Those small farms control almost half of the farmland in the U.S., but oddly enough, only account for 20% of agricultural sales, about $40 billion per year. On the other hand, you have mid-sized and large farms that make up 9% of farms, and those are, are, are farm, family farms as well. Uh, they have 40% of the farmland, accounting for about 64% of total agricultural sales, $250 billion worth. Then you have the corporate farms or the non-family farms. Only 3% of U.S. farms are corporate farms. They have 11% of the farmland. They make up about 16% of total ag sales another $64 billion. These numbers don't quite add up for me. And with only a little over 60,000 corporate US corporate farms in the US controlling about 11% of the total farmland, each one of those making a little bit over a million dollars per year. Almost 200,000 mid-sized and large family farms are making about $1.3 million per year. And small farmers, the majority, over 1.8 million of them, are splitting up the rest, earning an average of $22,000 each. That's before taxes and before expenses. Keep in mind, these numbers are also pretty old. We haven't gotten any updated statistics from the USDA in a few years, but it wouldn't surprise me if the proportions are even more out of whack today. So how does this all come into play in the cost of ranching in 2020? 
In 2017, I put out a Costa ranching video. You can check it out right up here. And uh, I'll put a description down in the link as well. In that video, I broke down the cost of raising a cow on the ranch and how much we had to make from each calf that we sell in order to break even. Those numbers really haven't changed over the past few years. The cost for us to raise a calf, still about $800. That's taking everything into account. Taxes, electricity, vet bills, vet costs, even the grass for, that they eat off the pasture or the hay that we have to buy. The interesting part is that the cost of raising cattle is kind of on a scale. It's, is it, well, actually, is it cheaper to have five cows or 500? Well, when they all sell for the same price, it really doesn't matter and because we all know what our calves are worth, and that's just a sliding scale. The year we first came to the ranch, we left our corporate jobs behind to help out family, and eventually we found our way of lives here. Uh, I remember calves were being sold for about a dollar per pound. That meant a 550-pound calf at weaning time was worth around 550 bucks. That was in 2008. Then legislation changed, and uh, prices of calves shot up to over two dollars a pound by 2014-2015. That same 550-pound calf now worth twice as much. Because the price of cattle is constantly changing, mostly due to supply and demand, but not on the consumer end of things, on the feedlot and processor side of things, producers, ranchers and farmers have really no control over what their product is worth. And this year, according to the USDA and the NASS, that's the National Agricultural Statistics Service, uh, the average price of calves in the U.S. has dropped to a low that we haven't seen since 2003 to less than 99 cents per pound. Current prices, according to the same source, put the national average at about $1.07. That 550-pound calf that cost $800 to raise is now worth 588 bucks. There's a term that I'm hearing more and more from farmers and ranchers is that they can't afford to sell their cows. It's like saying you can't afford to go pick up your paycheck, your one paycheck of the year, because doing so might just put you out of business. So why are calf prices so low? Why did they fall from over $1.50 in January to where they are now? Didn't we all see the empty shelves in grocery stores just a few months ago? You probably did, I know I did. But the problem is far from solved. Store shelves were empty because processors had to shut down due to COVID-19. That halted processing of beef and in turn deliveries of beef to your grocery store. When things started to back up, now processors are behind and they have lots of catching up to do and lots of animals to move through the system. We talk about making money and who's really making the money. Those bigger ranchers, which account for a total of 80% of agricultural sales in the U.S., over $350 billion alone, make sense. They're at the top of the food chain. Those animals that they have, they're going to sell them, and they're going to go first. Feedlots buy calves from ranchers and farmers, but there's only so much space. Prices on our end as a small rancher and farmer are lowered to stop ranchers from being able to sell their livestock and to slow the number of animals entering the system, supposedly to let the processors catch up. Hopefully they do because the way I see it, uh, the industry itself is choosing to put small ranchers and farmers in the position of choosing to sell cattle at a loss or spend more money to hold on to them and hope that things get better. Small farmers, over 1.8 million of them, who may not be able to make it another year, just to make sure that the other 12% can. This game is not new. It's been played for over 100 years. And the problem is that economic advancement, and yes, even technology, may have beat another small farmer out of business. That's the cost of ranching in 2020. Those that do survive this year and manage to live through the fallout will be, will be faced with a choice. Do you let somebody else tell you what you're worth? Do you let the big boys tell you what your product is worth? On April 11th, 1958, John F. Kennedy, a senator at the time, gave a speech in Bismarck, North Dakota. During that speech, he said, what does the farmer want? An opportunity to market his product at a fair price protected from extreme fluctuations and a chance to live out his life on his farm with some degree of certainty. He is, after all, the only man in our economy who must buy everything he buys at retail, sell everything he sells at wholesale, and pay freight both ways. 
That was in 1958. And not much has changed, but not all is lost. A number of small farmers and ranchers are finding ways through this year and into many more in the future. The cost of ranching in 2020 is gonna be change. I think you're gonna see more and more ranchers and farmers offering products directly to the customers. You're gonna see more local processors allowing farmers and ranchers to provide safe products to consumers, and you're gonna see more consumers buying local and supporting their local ranchers and farmers. The big farms and ranches and corporate entities will still have their place. They aren't going away. But it's time that the little guy maybe stands up for himself. Here on our ranch, we're finishing more and more cattle ourselves, getting them processed at a USDA inspected processing facility and then bringing them right back to the ranch, offering that meat for sale to our local customers and providing a service, food. Food that can't be disrupted by change in policy or a single processor shutting down or a feedlot not wanting to feed calves a minute longer than they want to before they go to a processor. If nothing else comes out of 2020, it's going to be a change in the way people think. That they must do what's best for themselves. Food. Health. Family. Safety. These are all things well within our control and we can take control of them. It just takes the courage to change. 2020, it's been a shit show. Will it get, can I say that? Will it get better? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. But what I do know is that we will continue on. Farmers and ranchers will continue to strive to be the best that we can to solve problems as they come, to diversify, and to succeed. In that very same speech in North Dakota, JFK also said this, whether we sail with the wind or against the wind, let us set sail and not drift or lie at anchor. Basically, that means do something. Try anything. Make changes to be successful. Thanks for coming along today. Subscribe and follow along as we explore the ranch life and escape the ordinary. Check out our website, rwamlife.com. Coming up, we have more on winter feeding and how we are changing and trying to save the ranch money in the middle of a drought. A whole lot more still coming up too, including our very first harvest of meat chickens. Boy, that's just right around the bend. And if you don't subscribe, you might just miss it. Be sure to hit that little bell button for notifications as well. Until I see you again, have a great week. And thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.